I am Anil Kumar. We are exploring limits with functions involving absolute functions. And now, as you understand, whenever absolute functions are involved, we have to write them as a piecewise function and rewrite our question. So, here the question before us is that we need to find limit of the function x squared plus absolute x minus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1 absolute value when x is approaching 1. So, first our strategy is define what absolute function is. So, in our case, it is absolute x minus 1. It could be written as x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1 and it is equals to minus of x minus 1 if x is less than 1. So, that is how you define your function. So, <clears throat> let us say uh, uh, this is the definition. So, that clearly shows that to solve this limit question, we have to basically split it into two parts, right? So, always it is like this. You have to split your function into two different parts and then solve it. Now, here one part will be when <coughs> x is approaching 1 but from the left side. So, x is approaching 1 but from left side means negative. The other is when x is approaching 1 but from the positive side. So, these are the two sections which we are going to consider. Okay. Now, when x is approaching 1 from the negative side, then how the function will be? Let's rewrite our function here and then we'll find the limits. So, let me just take up the function itself. So, the function here is x squared plus absolute value x minus 1. But when we are on the left side, when x is less than 1, then this absolute value should be written as minus of x minus 1. Do you get the idea? And then we have minus 1 here and then absolute value of this should be written as minus of x minus 1. So, that is how the function changes, right? So, we are only writing the function and first exercise is to simplify the function when x value is less than 1, okay? Now, in that case, let me just expand this and see what we get. So, x squared minus x minus and minus becomes plus. So, that plus 1 minus 1 becomes 0. So, we are left with that. And in the denominator, we have minus of x minus 1. Now, this could be written as I can factor x out. So, I get x minus 1 over minus of x minus 1. Now, x minus 1, x minus 1 cancel out. So, what we get here is minus x. So, on the left side, if I am considering this part of the function, then this limit could be written as, let me rewrite now the question itself. So, since when x is less than 1, we could write this question as limit x approaches 1 from the negative side. See, that is left side of the function, which I am now writing as minus x. You get the point, correct. Now, if I substitute 1 here, what do I get? I get minus 1 as my answer. You got the point, correct? So, that is how we should be doing. Now, let us again see the same function and this time we will use the value uh, positive when x is greater than 1. In that case, what happens to the function? Now, I could write my function as x square plus x minus 1 minus 1 over the same, right? It is x minus 1. So, we are trying to go a bit faster here. x square plus x minus 2 over x minus 1. This could be factored as x plus 2 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. And you can cancel these two, getting x plus 2 as a result. So, if x value is greater than 1, that is your function. So, now if you are trying to find the right side limit, we will say limit when x approaches 1 from the positive side of this function, which is x plus 2. So, if I substitute 1 here, what do I get? I get 1 plus 2, which is equal to 3. Now, clearly from here, my left side limit, what is the left side limit? Left side limit is equal to minus 1 and the right side is, is equal to 3 and they are not equal. Since left side limit is not equal to the right side limit, we say that the limit x approaches 1 for the whole function which x square plus x minus 1 absolute value 
divided by absolute value of x minus 1 does not exist. You get the point, right? Now, with, after doing all this, it is worthwhile sketching the function and really appreciating why it did not exist and what really happened. So what we will do here is we'll make a small sketch since I've taken a lot of room for all other activities. Now, let us say this. So we do have a discontinuity at uh, x equals to 1. So we'll just draw a dotted line at present. It does not represent a vertical asymptote, okay? Don't mix it up, okay? Now, that dotted line. So let us analyze what is happening on the right side of 1. This is right side of 1. And when I substitute 1, I get a value 3, right? So let us say this is 3 for us. Okay, so this is 3 for us. And the equation is x plus 2, right? So, so when I put 1 here, you get 3. If I put 2, it'll be 3 plus 2, 5. So I get two points to connect. And that means that will be my graph with slope of 1, correct? So that is the equation on the right side, correct? that is the equation. On the left side, however, what do I have? Let me take a different, slightly different shade. On the left side of 1, what happens is that the limit is minus 1. So this, this is 3 for us. Let us say this is minus 1. Okay. So, so this is minus 1 for us. And the equation is minus x. So it is going downwards. If I put 0 here, I do get 0. So it is going through the origin, right? So it is kind of graph which is going, going like this. Is that okay? So that is the graph of this particular function where this point is minus 1. Okay, minus 1. Well, let me rewrite. This is confusion. Minus 1 on this side. And this is 3 for us. 3 on this side. That makes more sense. So that is uh, the function which we are dealing with. And clearly, this is the jump discontinuity which you're looking into right so that is how the function is so whenever you have absolute functions it's a good idea to even sketch and show what you're working on i hope that really helps to understand the concept also go through the links and do some more practice questions since one of these questions will surely be in your test right so that is a hot topic for any test on limits i hope that helps you thank you and all the best